you too.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings in each of our lives. We thank you for your love for each of us. We thank you for each other and all the people you have put into our lives. We thank you for your compassion and mercy and guiding us through the troubled times in our lives and through the good times as well. We pray that you would give us your eyes, look past, to help us to look past our judgments or preconceived notions, to look at the heart so we can love each other in the same way that you have shown love to us. We pray for our pastor and Lord and his family. We thank you for everything they've done and we pray that you would continue to be with them. Lord, please make our love for one another and for all people grow and overflow just as our love for you overflows. Please strengthen our hearts to make us blameless and holy. In addition, help us to live with integrity in all of our relationships, never deceitful, never self-serving, above caring for others. We ask that you would be with those of us who are in need and that you would heal those of us who are sick or need healing. We know that you use these hardships to draw us closer to you. So please help us to walk with you in these circumstances to accomplish your purpose. And finally, Lord, we ask that you would forgive our sins and help us to be the church you always wanted us to be. Please help us to serve and glorify you and let all that we do be done with love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's pray for our church.
to play his music, God's music. Be in the position where you feel led, whether you need to stand or sit. Let's respond in a biblical posture. The altar is always open. Again, in our tradition, it is a sign of surrender, of desperation, but yet victory, because we have full confidence who we are. Kneeling down before Lord God, all, Almighty, our Lord Jesus Christ. So if there's any altar needs, please come. You want to pray over you? As we pray, I want you to think about what God has saved you from lately. Think about that. Tell him. Just say, God, thank you for saving me from fill in the blank. Just speak to God right now. Thank you for saving me from. Tell him how amazing he is. Use your own words in the silence. God, you are. Between you and God, tell him right now. God, you are. God, I thank you for. And so often as the Bible says, we are able to come and ask him for certain needs right now before you and God. Ask, obviously in Jesus' name, for his will to be, to be done. Ask him right now. I'm sure he's heard you all week. But right now as a family, God, I need, I pray for, please be with. God, may you heal. God, may I trust you more. And then lastly, before you and God, is anything between you and God that you know that is not of Him? Yes, sin and all that stuff. Know that as you move into this time of prayer, He forgives you and loves you no matter what. But right now, just ask God. Tell God, God, I am sorry for. Please forgive me for. Fill in the blank. God, we thank you that you love us no matter what. And we never want to abuse your goodness and your kindness and your grace. So we're just so thankful that you have saved us from ourselves at times. You've saved us, obviously, to be with you forever and ever in eternity in heaven. You've saved us for purpose, for love. And we thank you, God, that you are mighty, you are powerful, but yet you care for us. It says in your word, obviously, Lord God, that you have a number for every hair in our head. You have a name for every shooting star that you're so intricate in terms of how you created us and how you love us. And so we ask, Father, as you've already heard, for forgiveness. Thank you for loving us. And for those of us who have some altar needs, here on the altar, Father, we remember them. Whether there's a fork in the road, a big choice that needs to be made, whether it's healing of any kind, relationship, or physical healing, whether it's trust, whatever it is, Lord God, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, remind us, Father, as we pray that there is power here, not because of this building, but because of your presence living in us. So we come before you, our Lord God. Remind us that there's power that this is not just out of a duty, it's not just a religion. There's power, there's realness in all of this. That you have a purpose in our lives. And Father, lastly, as the things that you've entrusted in our care, the things that we're responsible for, our children, people that are counting on us to live every day, to be the people you've called us to be, we ask for your strength. We ask for your hope. When we feel like giving up, be with our relationships. May we, may we continue to allow you to be the center of everything that we do. And thank you for your unrelenting 
never giving up love for us. The God of many chances. The God of grace and mercy, our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. good to gather this morning again just want to remind you why it's so cold in here we want to continue to open the windows just to be uh, careful you know why um, and we want to continue to have the fans go and as we continue to remain as safe as possible in terms of the air amen amen uh, we want to remind you we have a potluck lunch right after service uh, we're going to eat good as we always do so thank you for all of you who continue to cook and provide uh, for our meal afterwards. Uh, food boxes are back there. And again, if you personally need food, uh, grab, a, grab a food box. Uh, but also, it's one of the main reasons why we continue to uh, collect the food boxes. Uh, and and uh, it's for to feed the hungry within our neighborhoods, people in your circle of influence, <coughs> excuse me, people at work. And so... Uh, grab a food box if need, and let's continue to feed the hungry here in our Vallejo, uh, North Bay community. Operation Christmas Child uh, is, is a go. Remember, uh, grab a box if, you're not, if you haven't already, uh, and then uh, we'll continue to remind you of the due date of when we are going to uh, bring them here to send them off. And so uh, Joyce is not here. Joyce is in uh, San Diego with uh, Pastor Roy visiting family. Uh, but she just uh, sends her greeting and reminds us uh, that it's continued to mend the ministry of our Operation Christmas Child food boxes. If you don't know what that is, right? These are distributed all around the world for uh, especially children that will receive this box. And there's fun things in there, much needed things in those boxes. And so it's a great tool, a great way to uh, continue to love people for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Pastor Cody, don't want you come. And he's going to uh, bless us in terms of uh, the offering, nlcvallejo.org. Thank you, all of you who continue to give and give online. And uh, we're excited uh, for Romy to bless us uh, with a special musical number. Good morning. Troy, our God is an amazing God. Amen. And we are happy to be in the worship this morning and I believe that you have the desire to serve him with full confidence through our giving. Shall we pray? Our loving Heavenly Father, our eternal God, we are grateful that we are in your house this morning. We are alive and well because of your grace and your mercy. And today, Heavenly Father, as we give, we are reminded of your words that we must give our tithes and offering into the storehouse. And in response, you will bless us with more blessings upon blessings each day. And Father, we pray that you uh, give us the strength to live in your presence. And when we give him the Father, we know that we sow seeds of Christ transforming power. And that when we give, we sow seeds of God's, of Christ, transforming home. And Lord, when we get to heaven and meet you face to face, someone will say to us, I'm in heaven, my friends and family, because you give. And even in this church, oh Lord, when we give, we can see people saved and sanctified because we give. Father, we pray that bless each one of us. That we may give faithfully for your kingdom. 
And when we give, Lord, we know that the, the mission of the church will be fulfilled through us. Help us to be faithful till the end, Heavenly Father. In our giving, our love for you, the love of the church. We thank you, Heavenly Father. And we give you all the glory and the honor. As we give, we must give it, give to you faithfully and willingly. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Psalms 147, verse 5. Great is our Lord and mighty Father. His understanding has to be it.
just a church service, amen? amen? But just to see you guys continue to move and mobilize to be the people of God for each other and for our community. We, we kind of skipped the, the basketball part, uh, but all the men who uh, just gave my, uh, financially and the church and all of your hard work in uh, putting the basketball together, uh, thank you so much. I, got, I posted a picture online of the, the court, and I got all these other churches now wanting to challenge us. Uh, so I, want to, uh, I just want to make sure we uh, start practicing now and preparing, but uh, a lot of fun. Everybody say truth. truth. One of the reasons why you saw all that imagery on the screen is because of a certain truth. And that certain truth that God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, created us. And when we, in our own rebellion, we sinned, and he came and to die and rise again so that we could live forever and ever. If you agree with that truth, say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why we see all those things, right? Uh, collecting food, building hoops for the community. Having a youth group is because that there is one truth, and that Jesus was not just this holy person who taught great stuff, but we believe that he is Lord, that he is our God. You know, a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine said the word truth. Well, first of all, when we think about the word truth, 
we think of automatically, man, it's a beautiful word, right? Would you agree? The word truth, it's a powerful word, it's a beautiful word. But my pastor friend of mine was just thinking one day, and he said to me this, man, the word truth, it's kind of, it's kind of mean and segregated. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? It's beautiful. And he told me just to think about it. When you say that one thing is the truth, you're saying that everything else does not compare. You're saying that everything else is, is not right. That you're saying that there's one truth. One plus one equals two. There's no other option. And it kind of just, I was taken back by that in terms of truth. And in terms of the word of God and Jesus, it's beautiful because of what is presented with in terms of what is the truth, right? It becomes beautiful when you realize what is it that's being presented. That that split second that we die because of Jesus, that we get to be in eternity forever and ever. That this, what our five senses can, can receive, that there's more to life than what we are experiencing now. Amen? Amen. And it becomes beautiful when we understand what the Bible is actually presenting. And I, this morning, I want to dive into four distinct biblical truths. That yes, it's saying that everything else is, is not, does not compare, but these four things that we are to adhere to from the Bible, it's a beautiful thing. And you wouldn't be here sitting in this room or online if you didn't agree some in some way, in some form, that this is it. This is my everything. That we see how great is our God. That statement of faith song, I believe in God our Father. Right? Four truths. Number one. Is this working? First thing. When I read the Word of God, it reminds me that one of the truths is that we are to spend large, large amounts of time with our Savior. Amen. That we are to spend large amounts of time with our God, right? Oh God, in Psalm 63, verse 1, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is, where, where here is no water, where there is no water. So it's reminding us that we have to spend large amounts of time Like he deserves it. Like we're excited to do it. Amen? I, this famous book, have you ever read this book, My Utmost for His Highest? Just want to show of hands. This is a famous devotional book uh, by Oswald Cha Chambers. And I'm just kind of a little bit taken back by this book. It's a beautiful book. But it's, it's a one, one page devotion every day when you wake up. You read this one page. And you know, the title says, My Utmost for his highest, meaning my everything for God. And it just reminds me, one page <laughs> that will take you three minutes to read, that's my everything to God, right? And obviously Mr. Chambers, who wrote the book, wants us to spend large amounts of time with our God. But I'm just reminded here, when you read the Word of God, that people in the Bible spent a lot of time with God, like they enjoyed it. Because so often when we pray, there are some times where we pray, God, help me get out of this mess, right? Oh, God, I need you. Look what's happening. And sometimes we concentrate our prayers in terms of that. And we are to just spend time with God like we love it. And we know when we spend time with God, we hear from Him. He answers prayer. Here's the famous thing that pastors like to say. God always answers prayer, right? What do we always say? We always say either he, he, he says yes right away, I will answer that prayer, or he'll say no, it's not on my will, or he'll say wait, right? It's not in my timing yet. But we always say that God always answers prayer, either yes, no, or wait. But, you know, I'm also, you know, if we hear the word of God, I'm also presented with some certain truths here in terms of why God doesn't answer at times. I remember when I read this verse, look at this, in the same way you husbands 
must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should. Check this out, husbands. So your prayers will not be hindered. Wow. So in terms of yes, no, wait, I'm also being presented here that God won't even hear us if we do not honor our wives. Right? Yes, it goes both ways. Yes. But here God's just picking us on us men and us husbands. That God says, look, your prayers will be prevented, slowed down, muzzled, choked, stopped, terminated, delayed, handicapped, if you don't honor your wives. I was like, man, I gotta go back right now. Sky's sick right by the way. She's got she's got a very bad cold, but I gotta leave right now and say sorry for stuff. No, but you know what I mean, right? Uh, here's another thing in terms of prayer and talking to God. Uh, this is an obvious one, right? Sin. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So there's this idea that in terms of when you come to God, that there's unconfessed sin. We're not talking about spiritual perfection here, right? But if there's still some unconfessed sin, especially towards each other, that God says, look, it needs to be done. If you are to talk to him for your prayers to be powerful and effective, Amen. that there needs to be confession. How many of you have been forgiven by somebody and you did not deserve it? Raise your hand. Just me? It's okay to raise your hand. Yeah. That there needs to be confession in terms of, you know, God speaking to us. This one kind of threw me off a little bit. If a man shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. You guys see that, family? Mm -hmm. If we don't take care of the needs in our community, God says, I'm not even going to hear you because that's one of our jobs in terms of God's movement and talking to him. And so I'm just kind of reminded that it's not only just yes, no, or wait, but there's some things in the Bible that, that God is specific on, that we are to honor our wives. Honor each other, yes, honor each other. That we are to make sure that we come and say, God, please forgive me. And he always does. He always forgives you. If you feel any kind of guilt right now of what you've done, you need to stop that because God says, I love you no matter what. Yeah. You hear me? I love you no matter what. You don't have to earn your way. That's the crazy thing about this whole thing. The amazing thing about this whole thing about God. That there's grace and forgiveness for you time and time again. That you don't have to sit here and pretend to be all perfect and put on a show for anybody. That we can come here all messed up. And God says, I love you no matter what. Amen. 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 There's some uh, practicals here. Some applications, right? What do you mean spend time with God? What do I do? A lot of you guys have walked with the Lord. You guys know all this already. But maybe it's, it's, it's to find a, a specific spot, a specific place. Not always because you're so busy, I understand. But find a place. How do I spend the time with God? Read the Word or read a devotional book, a Christian book, a Christian author that someone wrote, right? And you guys know this time and time again. How do I pray? Sometimes I use the ACTS acronym, the pastor, right? Because I don't know what to pray. I, I come to God, I'm like, um, I love you, and uh, I don't know what to say sometimes. <laughs> and so I use the acronym sometimes, ACTS. I start off with adoration. God, you're amazing. You're awesome. I love you, you know? And then I start with the C. God, please, can, I, I forgive you. Please forgive me for, and then fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And then I start saying, thank you, God. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And then the supplication part, fancy word, big word, meaning the ask. Then I go to God, God, you know my needs. Mm -hmm. I come before you, right? 
I know some artists that they put on some Christian music and sometimes, not all the time, but they spend time with God by getting their canvas out and they put Christian music on and they start painting things and they spend time and honor God that way, right? Or with sculpting. Some of you guys do journaling. You have a journal and you write and you spend time with God through journal. I know a friend of mine likes to dance and puts, puts music on, worship music on and uh, not in front of people, right? by herself, right? She'll just start dancing, okay, before the Lord. Put on worship music, but just spend time with God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Like you like it, like you enjoy it. Uh, I was driving with my best friend, and I just kind of recently became a Christian uh, and gave my life to the Lord, kind of like my, my senior year of college. And we're driving through Malibu, California, Malibu Canyon, and we're driving, and he's like looking at everywhere. I'm like, keep your eyes on the road, keep your eyes on the road. But he's looking at all the beautiful creation, the beaches and whatnot, and he starts talking to Jesus. He's just he's driving, I'm sitting on shotgun, and he's like, God, you're amazing. This is so beautiful. He starts just talking to Jesus. And I just saw in that how authentic that was, right? That we can talk to him and practice his presence in everything that we do. Amen? Amen. Number two. So spend a large amount of time with our God, believing in the right God, the only God, with the right intent. When you study a religion, you've got to study two things, particularly. It's manuscript and it's leader. Would you agree? Yep. Right? You've got to study its manuscript, what they wrote, or if they wrote anything, and their leader or leaders. And obviously, we come to the conclusion that it is Jesus and his 12 disciples, and the manuscript is what we call the Word of God, the Bible. And we've come to the conclusion, family, that when we read the Word of God, what is the right God? Who is the right God? That he's a God of grace, but he's a God of holiness, right? We believe and conclude that God is, is uh, love and forgiveness, but he's also the God of power and might. We believe and conclude that he's about justice, mercy, and grace. A friend of mine sent me this, right, in terms of God. Listen to this. If a person killed my son and was sentenced to death and I let the law take its course, that's justice. If I plead for my son's killer's life to be spared... That's mercy. But if I took my son's killer out of prison and took him home with me, adopted him as my own son, and gave him all the love, privileges, and inheritance I'd give my own son, that's grace. Yeah, it's what God did for us. Right? A lot of times, I, I, I doubt that. Can he be that good? He's a just God, yes. He's a merciful God. He withholds punishment that we deserve, but yet he is a God that says, I will give you what you don't deserve. That is the God that we proclaim. Amen? Amen. Amen. Believing in a wrong view of God will most likely lead us to a distorted perception of life. Believing in a wrong view of God will likely lead us to a distorted view of people. Some people say it doesn't matter who you believe in, it just matters what, that you believe in something, that you believe in God. Have you heard that before? Right? It doesn't matter what you believe in and who you believe in, it's just that, that you believe. So I can believe this water bottle is God, right? I can sing, how great are you, right? And all of, it just matters that you believe. Uh, I was going to pick on Derek. Derek's up there working. Uh, you know, if I came to Derek, and I went to Derek Modesto, and I said, well, uh, I heard you're not really into music, but, but you're into ballet. Right, Derek? If I said you're not into music, and he was walking back there, if you're into, I heard you're really into ballet. What do you think Derek would say to me? I'm like, what? If I said to Derek, well, I heard Derek that you're not really into video games that you read a novel a week, Moby Dick, and all that, right? Derek's like, excuse me, that's not who I am, right? If I went to Derek, Derek, I heard you don't like seafood. 
that you're a vegetarian. I think Derek would punch me in the face. <laughs> God wants us to know the real him. God's desire is that we understand and grasp who he really is. He wants us to know the real and one and only God, his character. Amen? Amen. That is one biblical truth. What do you work hardest at? Someone asked me that question. What do you work hardest at? And in any given time of my life, it was if I was in high school, I would tell that person, I work so hard with my tennis. I want to be the best tennis player I could be, right? Or if someone asks you, I, I work hardest at my job. Or I work hardest at playing soccer. Or I work hardest at my hobby. What do you work hardest at? And when you read the Word of God, it says here, make every effort. Make every effort to add to your faith good, goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. I'm reminded in the Word of God that in terms of believing in the right God, that we are to spend our energy in being like Jesus. Not to earn our ticket into heaven, but because he, he deserves it. Amen? Amen? And whenever you fail this list, will he love you? Will he love you? Yes, right? But I'm reminded that when we, when we are his child, that we're reminded that, man, that we should spend large amounts of time with him, yes, that we should know the right God, but also that we are to work hardest not to earn our salvation, it's already there, but we are to work hard in being holy like our, like our Jesus. Some crazy way, as hard as that list is to do, that that's where we're gonna find pure joy. That list of being like Jesus is where we're gonna find true peace. That list, as hard as it is sometimes, when we live it out, that will give us the understanding of what life really is. And that is serving our Jesus by loving each other. Amen? Amen. Love the church. Truth number three. Love each other. Have you ever used this uh, statement? Uh, These are my friends. And these are my friends from church. Have you ever said that? Oh, these are my friends, but these are the friends I have from church. And I'm hoping one, how it comes together somehow. Right? You get a knock on the door and someone from church, uh, and you, you go to your husband or your wife, honey, it's, a, it's the people from church, what do I do? Right? <laughs> It says here that in terms of each other, above all, love each other deeply, strenuous, fervently, stretched out, intense, like someone jumping for a rebound with all of your might, like someone crossing the, the finishing line of the tape with all of their strength, right? Love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Every time someone wrongs us, especially in the church, we have two choices. I can deal with it, forgive it, cover it, and move on knowing that I'm forgiven by him. Or I can drag that person through the mud and in hatred stir up all kinds of dissension and disunity. Don't get me wrong, we gotta deal with our hurts, we gotta deal with our pain in the most biblical way possible. But it's talking here that we are to cover each other. That we are to forgive each other. Why? Because it terminates any kind of sin to go rampant within the church family. I saw this picture that was sent to me 
up here on the screen. It's where people are coming into the church and they're falling away and dying. And it was just a great visual for me to remind us that maybe, maybe, it's not the reason, but people come into the church, but then they see hypocr hypocrisy. And so they leave. And yes, we've failed. We've failed at times. But there's also some times where we've been so beautiful. There's also some times the reason why you're sitting here is because someone showed you this crazy supernatural type of love. Amen? Amen. Amen. Last thing. <clears throat> Again, what are the three C's of our church? Letter C, number one is what? Christ. Christ. Second is what? Church. church. And the third C is Community. community. So it's biblical truth that we are to be a people sent out. You know these verses. It says, if it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from ourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. I'll read that second verse in a second. Uh, a friend of mine who works in the jails, pastor friend, he said to me, you know what the most unified group of people in the jail is? I said, well, I tell you. He's like, it's the Christians. I'm like, what are you talking about? Because he's reminding me, and you've seen documentaries, some of you have been to jail. Tess. No, I'm just kidding, Tess. I uh, just want to make sure you're paying attention. Um, but seriously, you guys, you, you guys have heard the jails. Once you get in the jail, you automatically know what group you belong to by looking at the, you know, the color of your skin. Right? If you're African American, that is the group. If you're Asian, you join the Asians. If you're Caucasian and so on and so on, Hispanic and so on and so on. That might not be truth everywhere, but in terms of documentaries that we've heard, and the, the Christian pastor told me, yeah, the most unified group in jail is those who get saved in jail. And it's a beautiful blend of multiculturalism. The Christians in jail. But that's what the work of God can do. It can bring people from all different nations and customs and background to be sent out together, right? To do good works. And God says that you are my handiwork. He says that about you and I, that he thinks that you are his, his special art and creation. You are my handiwork. To do good things. And you know this famous verse, Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news, right? We've got, we got to know the truth. We've got to study it. Proclaiming the truth. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they, they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. A girl named Jennifer. I asked her, how did you come to know the Lord? How come you're serving in the Lord? And she said to me, well, there, one day there, there was these church folk. She was in this high school, uh, she loved drama and loved theater. And she told me, you know what, the reason, Pastor, that I come to church now and I'm faithful to God is because these Christians continuously came out to watch our drama productions. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. That that was her foot in the door, to come to Jesus, because church folk wanted to support her. A girl named Kimberly, a mom, I asked her, why are you here? Why do you come to church? And she said, well, a church long ago, we were struggling financially, and this church provided brand new sneakers and shoes for my four kids. They just showed up. We've got things for you, towels, different things, but here are some shoes. A guy named Bill, business guy, how did you come to know the Lord? Why are you so faithful? He said, well, this church continually loved my kids. And they invited my teenagers and my little children to youth group and kids group on Wednesday night. And Bill said, I was so curious about these people who loved my kids. I was kind of apprehensive. Who are these, who are these weird cult type people, right? <laughs> Loving on my kids. And Bill just realized, man, there was just so much love there. That they had so much love for my children. And I, my whole family now are here. 
because this church was sent out. This football dad coach, this wasn't, it wasn't a high school coach, but just one of, the, one of the local coaches in the community. Why are you here, coach? And he said, this church, this local church down the road, knew we needed help with uniforms and sponsoring travel and bus fare and all that to get to the games. And this church kicked down financially. So not everyone, but they helped out with providing football uniforms and gasoline so they can get to their games. This other person said, the reason why I'm here is because this local church always volunteered at the homeless shelter. There's different groups, right? There's different groups, different businesses are volunteer, but she said that the church people that always would come and feed us, that's why. And lastly, there's so many, let me just pick one more. Um, the church, uh, this lady said, my, my house burned out, not all of it, but it was severely damaged caught on fire and the church down the road came by later that day and gave so many different types of gift cards and, 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 and food and, and money so that she could get back on her feet again and she said because this church was sent out to help me I am now here serving amen that we are to be a church that is sent out. As the worship team comes up, or at least maybe Donna, as we're going to uh, dive into com communion, here's a challenge I have for us if you're not doing this already. I want you to drive. I want you to get on your bike. I want you to walk around your neighborhood, however it is. And I want you to ask God specifically, God, where are you working? Walk around your neighborhood. Drive around your community. Where are you working? Number two, what do you have me do? What would you have me do? Ask God, where are the hurts and needs? And begin praying, begin spending large amounts of time with God and asking Him, God, where and how do you want me to serve my community this week, this month, this year, all of my life? Amen? Church family, we all have our own needs. God is on it. Pastor, you're sitting here, you're saying, Pastor, I got my own stuff. I can't even help anybody. You know what? There's a time and place where, yeah, you got to get yourself in spiritual health, and we understand that. If you need to do that, do that. But if God is moving your heart in the direction, I've always thought to myself, that one of the main ways I can heal from my own stuff is looking at the interests of others. Amen? Not all the time, but I know in my life, when I've gone through some horrible stuff, when it's my own fault, when I start thinking of other people's needs, some weird way, it begins to heal me and puts my focus back into perspective. And like I always say, you have no idea brothers and sisters, what your love and faithful act towards someone can mean for someone's soul. Yes? Here's another thing. You don't have to do this. I want you to strive to bless three people this week. Strive to bless three people this week. That third person, try to find someone that doesn't deserve it. Try to bless three people in some way, in some form this week. And that third person, find someone that just doesn't deserve to be blessed. We'll see what God does with that, right? I am at this communion table. I am at this communion table and I get to receive communion every month because of many, a handful of certain people in my life. I remember, I was being honest with you, I was a high school kid. I gave my life to the Lord, but I went to a party. Not a party with like streamers and party hats and whatnot, but just a party that I shouldn't have been to. And I knew if I continued to stay at that party with filled with things that, that are just not of God, 
So I called, I reached out, not the pastor, but I called someone from the church and this person just drove over and said, get in the car right now, let's get out of here. The reason why I'm at this table is because someone, I didn't have enough money to go to a Christian camp in Lake Arrowhead, California, and someone sponsored me from the church so I can go to camp. The reason why I'm at this table that I can come to communion is because my aunties long ago began to pray for me when I was a little kid. So we come at the table right now and we are thankful for those people that moved us to Jesus. Again, usually in the tradition of our church, we have the men and some of the pastors come, but because of, uh, of the pandemic and whatnot, what we're going to do is, as Donna plays through the, the music and her guitar, I'm going to invite you just to simply come, grab an element, hold on to the elements, and I'll lead you through the bread part, and I'll lead you through receiving the, the juice. But at this time, as Donna plays, let us come before the Lord. And this table is for all who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Come, take, and receive. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Hallelujah.
the last part of the service. Uh, again, as we uh, come together, uh, we're going to have potluck later, uh, and at the end of the service, I'm going to ask Minda to close, close us in prayer. But uh, continue to pray for Sky. She really wanted to be here, uh, knowing that it is Pastor's Appreciation Sunday. Um, so, but she's sick. She doesn't have COVID or anything. She's just got a really bad cold, and uh, she wanted to be here. So, hello. Oh, hello. hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, today, actually, this whole month was uh, Pastor's Appreciation Month. So, I hope you found a way to appreciate our our Pastor Tim here and maybe our other pastors that um, come and worship with us as well, and uh, those who are in our community as well, maybe just a shout out or whatnot. And if you haven't done it yet, I hope you find a way um, sometime today, or you know, just keep on appreciating our pastors in our community and as well as Pastor Tim. So we're gonna start it off with just a little bit of a video, just a nice, short and sweet video, and then our kids are gonna come out and do their thing and we will continue to honor him. All right.
And you know, everybody agree, our pastor is so athletic, I can't even catch up with him. <laughs> even high schooler will drag their feet just to play with him. So bring them in here. See, that's that's the good thing. I really appreciate that one, you know. And me and my house and all this congregation who are in here, we are ready to support our pastor. And that's how we appreciate him. We are here. Uh, if I could only put one 800 member of BLLC, we could have that one so he could call us to help him. And our goal here is to reach out. And it's not only like we're showing that we are a church, we are showing the love of Christ. One of our C right there. <laughs> Christ, church, community. So, Donna, can you take over? And what's the next part of this appreciation? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, thank you, Kurt Butch. That's just a, a summarization of what um, Pastor Tim's been doing for the past year. And I think you can see in the little um, photo montage of what he's been doing. He's so active in the community and just always wanting to connect with um, everyone, really, and um, wants to know how our church can help. So, again, we want to thank you, Pastor Tim, for what you're doing and what you're continuing to do. We praise God for your life and your family as well. We want to just bless you with a little something here from the board, and I'm sure uh, others here would want to bless you as well. So this is just a little token of our appreciation to you that I know that God will bless you. Let's give Pastor Tim a round of applause. Thank you, church. Uh, Allowing me to be your pastor. Uh, you know, joyous and wonderful times, but also difficult times. Uh, you know, moving in, in through a pandemic and trying to get my family situated. And uh, you know, I'm really a California boy. You know, the three of them—they're really island people. And so, uh, the journey, the difficult journey uh, of you know transitioning and adjusting to California life, and uh, what has been such an easy blessing is all of you. And I also wanted to say, uh, you know, forgive me if I haven't been the pastor that you needed at times. Uh, and there's some times where I've just at times needed to focus on my family and focused on life. And thank you for the grace and the mercy you've shown me when I can't be at everything and I can't do everything. Uh, but I just am so thankful for all of you uh, just for being my friend and uh, inviting me to barbecues and inviting me to camping trips and, and uh, providing warm clothes and so on and so on. Thank you, church. I appreciate it. and love you guys. Pastor, one more. Oh, this is a note from the congregation. Oh, okay. Remember, and this is also the from the Foster family. Oh, okay. wow. And I believe there's more over there that's coming. <laughs> I appreciate you. Love you. Oh, okay. Thank you, guys. And again, as we come, we remember, <laughs> as Roby back uh, has mentioned, there's pastors who have gone before us, pastors here like Carlito and Pastor Roy. Uh, Valenzuela, La Roya, uh, we, uh, if you're watching and you watch this in the future, Valenzuela family who know and are part of the bloodline and uh, the, the La Roya family, thank you so much. Uh, look what God has done through your faithfulness. And so, uh, amen. Hey, thank you. So, we, we know that we have a lot of pastors in our church as well and they've been very supported during the pandemic time. And... The first one that I'm going to tell you is the Ninong Ninang of this church. I think every other, every kids, every wedding, these are the pastors that we call on. To be our Ninong Ninang. In English, Godfather, Godmother. And that would be uh, Pastor Carlito and Ninang <laughs> Lisa Loyola. And, and we have something we can give in my... Uh, come on here so we can pray over later on after this. Come on. This is the Nino, the Ninas. I would say, since I was here, since 2000, <laughs> 10 years, everybody agree on that. Okay, now we also have, in every every time, uh, uh, we have our our pastors as well, uh, the Bercellis. They, they've been very, since I came to this church, they've been around. They've been, anytime, uh, could we just call them in the last minute, they're here. And I don't see them here, but I hope you're watching this in Facebook. We appreciate you. Uh, and also, we have another pastor, uh, 
it's not a secret. It's one of my favorite because uh, he knows my my wife way back many years when they were still young. Pastor Roy, <laughs> Pastor Roy, and uh, Ate, uh, Pastor jo Joyce Labusta. I know you're watching. We also appreciate. We have a card for you here. Uh, uh, have a safe travel while you're somewhere out there traveling. And we also appreciate you guys. Uh, Uh, we're gonna be uh, asking someone to to pray over the pastor. Uh, Tito Emil, if you could give us a prayer, please, for these pastors. And Tito Emil also had been a pillar of this church as almost like a sub pastor. But I'm gonna ask him to pray over the pastors that are here. And okay, thank you. Now. <clears throat> Our pastors, uh, Butch had mentioned, uh, we had had so many pastors, and uh, they are our father in our <coughs> walk with God. I know we have uh, our natural fathers, and uh, we get inspiration from our very father only one father, almighty, and all these pastors got uh, their blessings and uh, impetus from them. So, <clears throat> I, I deeply appreciate the work done by every pastor uh, ever since we were in San Francisco, our pastors there. Uh, we, we have uh, we've been to if, uh, Amador, the pastor, the, the pastor from Amador who was our speaker last week, didn't know that uh, they they sponsored us. As a, as a church, that's how good uh, the relationship between pastors are. They were worshiping. We were worshiping in the morning. We were doing Sunday school while we were doing our service, and vice versa. <coughs> then, when this uh, church became available, you know, from the district uh, superintendent gave us this uh, building. We don't have to build a new building. So, what I'm saying is that the love that comes from the, the church, comes from the fellowship, as I've been saying, we are a family. Each one of you, each one of us, is, is a member of that family. As we say in our vernacular, ang sakit ng kalingkilin ay sakit ng buong katawan. But the small finger ails the whole body. That's what we, we feel. That's what I feel from this congregation and I know what that's what you feel too. So <clears throat> I'm just wondering why there's only one month for pastor appreciation. <laughs> they should be appreciated every day, every, every month. Yes. It's not a one time deal. <laughs> and we feel it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not every day. Sunday. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we could give appreciation to our pastor. You know, Lord, that uh, his coming here is not an accident. It's God ordained. He could not, he could have said no 
to the board that uh, invited him. Lord, we surely appreciate our pastor. His life, his life, his family, and uh, we know that uh, we shall have a longer time to be together. And uh, we are very thankful. First of all, from you, Lord, that uh, he, you have assigned him, to, you have given him to us. And we appreciate that very much. Nothing comes by accident, which is still ordained. We know that. Uh, this is God given. Lord, thank you, Pastor, for Pastor Carlito and Lisa, Pastor Roy and Pastor Mercedes, and uh, Pastor Oben, the founder of the of this church, Pastor Valenzuela and Manong Rica. They are in heaven now, you are, they are with you now, but uh, I know, Lord, that they are looking down on us every time, guiding this church, though they are not here. So bless their lives, Lord, continue to bless them. And we pray that uh, the love that emanates from you will be given out the pastor and the congregation to love for each other be there always. Lord, this we pray in your name. Amen. 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 Minda, won't you come uh, to the stage? She's going to officially close us in prayer. I've never been at a church that loves to uh, uh, just be included. So Minda, won't you come? She prepared a beautiful closing prayer. Uh, a couple of things as we uh, leave also, Minda, come. Um, we're going to eat outside. We're just, it's warm enough. It's not raining out there. We're okay. Right? Inside, it's wet outside. It's inside. Okay, so we're going to eat inside, all right. Well, we'll and then we'll, we'll close a prayer and, and maybe um, bless the food as you close. Okay. 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 okay, let us pray. Father, once again, I thank you for the songs, the prayers, and the word we have heard today. May the power of the word sold in our hearts become alive. Thank you, for we have been refreshed, encouraged, enlightened, and empowered us to keep us going and growing in our faith. Help us to internalize it by putting you first in our lives. Walk daily with you wherever we go, and focus in you whatever circumstances we are in. As I pray, Lord, as we depart from this place and as we gather together for a celebration, for being so grateful for our pastors. I pray that you will continue to bless us, go with us, and bless us, even as we partake the provisions and the preparations we have today. I pray that you bless it for the nourishment of our bodies. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. 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 All right, let's eat.